603. Apparently Richard can't make it. We anticipate uh, Eric at any time. Um, the amendments to the agenda. So we have name, road, and driveway. Let's see. Uh, we have a letter to the Wolcott Select Board dated today regarding naming of driveway and road. I'll never say their name right, so I apologize in advance. Stephen and Julia Hugasian, is that it? <laughs> Currently live at 1283 Keeler Pond Road. They're subdividing and selling a parcel of the land with the house. The driveway, driveway they have, whoa, the driveway they have used off of Keeler Pond Road now becomes a private road per the Development Review Board, so therefore needs to be named. The who I can't. The Hugasians have requested the private road be named Maple Bear Lane. There are no similarly named roads in Wolcott. Maple Bear? Yeah, so in order to do such, they need our permission. They are under the guidelines of the Development Review Board as there's two ha now two parcels on the road. It becomes its own road, pr own private road, sorry. Any thoughts? Well, it's always was a private road. But I'm just saying it'll now be a private road that they're naming with two parcels on it versus one. It, yes, okay. yeah, absolutely. It's always been their own private driveway. Yes. Now it will be a road because of the two parcels. Okay. Yeah. So I don't have any, the only thought I have is last time we approved the naming of a road, it didn't go over well with a neighbor. Right, to... but this would affect no one. This will affect them only. It's their property. They're they own the, the whole houses. piece. The new, They're new subdividing it. Whoever buys them. Oh, right. Whoever but buys. because they own the subdivision, yeah. they would have permission to name it anyways. Usually the person who the Right. Because it's theirs. Right. <coughs> right. So they will own the subdivision, therefore they have the right to ask us to name the road. Much like last time, except last time there was numerous people A developer. on the road. Yeah. yeah. And some of them didn't like the name and yeah. others. But since that's not a concern, that. I'll make a motion to accept the name of the road. If motion that's a well by Michael. So, but that means we've got to buy a sign. Well, if it's a private road, don't they? We still have 911 signs on private roads. Right, but they would have, don't they have to buy the private, the, the, I was going to say, they have to name the private, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Richard, not Five is he no one. He said he's uh, Okay, sick. so it's a motion by Michael. Any they questions? Buy their, they buy their own. They buy their own sign. Where are we? What's up? Where are we at? Uh, I'll second, second it. We're That's just, fine. We're just yeah. getting started. Yeah. So there's a motion by Michael, seconded by Kim, to allow the Hugasians to name their new private road Maple Bear Lane at their expense with the sign. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Sorry. I mean, they can buy that sign through the town. They can cut a check and yeah. it could be like, yeah. Because if they buy it, they're going to pay more for it. Yeah. yeah. It was the only one. So, Deb, if you want to let them know that they can purchase the sign through the town, would be great. This was the only one. Okay. Yep. All right, perfect. So, I guess we're going to move on to number three approve the minutes. Yes. No, it's all right. Approve the minutes of February 5th, 2020. to find it. I did have one. Where are we? Um, Highway Commissioner's Report, Deb, where it says motion by Kim to authorize the $6,000 for repairs. Can we just say for engineer expenses? Because that was where we voted on. That was all I saw. Yeah, and then I had one. Um, yeah. 
it was a ten thousand dollars that appears in the highway budget. And then I said that the money from the highway department could go towards the salary of the TA for the work on behalf of the highway department. That should say that in the future that could be contributed towards the work of the TA on behalf of the highway department. And we also, I also said that we took the same approach with the town clerk budget. Uh, for the transitional period, we did a line item for that. So I feel like it'd be good to show that we did it for both. All right, if there's no other changes, I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the select board meeting minutes from February 5th, 2020. I'll second. By Michael, all those in favor say aye. 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 Were you done, Ben? Abstain, I wasn't here. Oh, that's right. There you go. All right, thank you. Highway Commissioner, hello, sir, how are you? Good. Got a couple, three, four things here. Um, I don't know if you've all read the uh, latest profit and loss. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to uh, bring up and make point of a couple of things that are uh, concerned, but I don't know what to do about it. The labor budget is, um, it looks it looks pretty decent between now and July with the money's left. But we also we spent a ton of money out of this labor budget that belongs to the FEMA when we get everything settled. So this, I think there's a labor enough money to do what we need to do between now and next July when that fiscal year starts over again. Are you talking about page seven? I'm sorry. Are you looking at page seven, your expenses? Is that what you're on? Um, I'm on one of two, maybe page seven, I don't know. Oh, this is small. It's the highway. No, that's the transfer station. No. I just wanna make sure we have the same. I don't have that. I have- Should be in there. I have the eight. entirety. Eight. Let me let me just see if it matches the entirety. Yeah, it does. Eight, Thirty-four, thirty-two, four, one, three. Yeah, so it matches the bottom of page seven. The expenses portion. Yep. That's what he's talking about. So I, I, I think we're going to be all right there when we finally get the FEMA budget straightened out. That money, the FEMA money will go into this budget. So we should make it. I think it's going to be okay when we get our FEMA money because we're using FEMA money in our hourly budget for the town. Follow me? Yeah, the reimbursement's going to get that yeah, line sure. item back. I think up we'll to be all right. And the fuel looks good. And the, and the sand, because that's good because it's we already bought it and everything into the into it or it's just hard, hard, right? over something like that. The big concern I got now was parts and repair. We're up to forty one grand right now. Yeah. And we only had twenty five in the in the budget. Right. And we still got work to do on the backhoe and the trailer. And the bottom line you're over two sixty. Yes. And the FEMA money that we haven't received back yet is roughly how much? Do you know? I don't really, honestly. Know. I know it's a, you, we've got the, uh, the material built into the FEMA budget here. If you look on the, the last page, the material that we bought already is recorded to Brook Road, uh, Ballin Brook Road, Elmore, anywhere that we spent money. Yes, yeah, so material we charged it to the road. So that's not so showing. I, so that's got a, no sorry information. So that's not showing up in the material up top. It's a separate line item at the bottom. Yes, it's, I got page two or two. But. Where's the material? This is all the. Yeah, no, I saw this. I was looking okay. at your material. Other than that, 
Oh, that should be all right. I mean, we've, we've not touched anything there. I didn't even see it. Gotcha. And there's no equipment in this femur or a labor. Is that strictly material? So I didn't understand the labor part. Why, um, why are we, you, you mean our guys are doing FEMA repairs, therefore our labor costs are higher than anticipated, or we're taking well, out of the labor bucket yeah, to pay for FEMA sense. stuff? We're spending the money out of the original highway budget to cover the FEMA money right now. I mean, guys got to get paid, so that's how we're doing it. The only place is any labor money. Right, with the idea that those reimbursements are coming back. Reimbursed, yes. But whose labor? Uh, the town labor. Okay. Right. right, the highway department labor. All right. So, why don't we have a, why don't we have yeah, any labor? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Why, why so don't that we have hundred eighty thousand dollars which says FEMA flooding 2019, and then FHWA North Wolf well, Flood. Some of that flooding is also the North Wolf Road. But yeah, that's what I'm saying. It says FH. WA North woke up flooding 2019 is 140. So that's 180,000 off, sort of, your 265, bringing you to 85. Yeah, okay. we got to show it somewhere. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Until we get paid, there'll always be a deficit. Yeah, I see because because you're saying that the work this was not anticipated labor. Right. right. This is labor towards because of this natural yeah. disaster. Yes. Therefore, okay. Yep. But that's for material only. This is for the material second only. Not late. The not labor's labor not broken. Right. Those aren't broken out. Will that leave us with the surplus in materials? You. Sorry, uh, Will that leave us with a surplus amount of money and material after we get those reimbursements? Should we no, have extra money not, or is it all already spent? It's not. No, this money's yeah. spent. Right. Right. This is what we pay. Yep. Southwest gravel construction. Uh, but you have another line item for. So you're just taking our, our labor, materials. the budget of labor is being cut out of because we didn't anticipate this labor because we don't have a bucket of money yet. So the yeah. labor that we're right. rolling up is. We wouldn't be rolling up at this fast of a speed, except the fact that they're doing work towards these disasters that we didn't expect. So when FEMA pays us, the idea is then that labor bucket will fill back up to what it should be. Yes. But right now it's moving faster than it should down. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to raise everybody's attention. I mean, yep. and who knows, we could be six months to a year before we get paid from yeah. FEMA. Right. Yeah. That's um, that's partially why we took out the quarter million dollars, yeah. which was above and beyond. Yeah. So, have you talked to the treasurer? Does is there room in the quarter million dollars to backfill any of this, or we have some? We we haven't spent the two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan that we took. No, no, that she spent that what one hundred and thirty whatever it is. Yeah. To pay somebody? Yeah. Is that what that money went for? So there's still one hundred say hundred thousand there. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, one twenty six nine. That's yeah. what we spent on out of the two hundred fifty thousand dollar loan. Yeah. So we spent that but money. But that also pay. isn't finished oh. yet because it has to get okay. paved once again. And that's spring. right. It's also isn't finished yet. Oh, it's but, right. Because right. they, right. they couldn't top it. In, but we could put that hundred thousand dollars to an, another deficit to buy us more time before we get the FEMA reimbursement, and then the FEMA reimbursement can go to back the paving costs. Yeah. So it's like shuffling. But that's going to yeah. get. It's, then we're going to pay interest on it. Is what it is. One column. Yeah, that's that's explaining why it was so hot. Yeah. Okay. I uh, met with uh, Joey, our uh, designer we hired, and Patrick. And they went around yesterday. We did the Brook Road and the North Wolfert Road again. And uh, Joey's going to get us. I took the old drawings from Bear Swamp, and Joey's going to use them to design the bridge or the culvert, whatever, at the bottom of the Brookville. So we're going to say, should save some engineering fees there. And the goal is to, after everybody approves it, to get 
this out for a bit before our 180 days are up. Because it's still an emergency up to 180 days, which I understand, and I was told that it's 100% reimbursement if you get it within the 180 days hmm. versus the 75. Okay? So I'm working on that too. Uh, the horse signs, I did apply, well, I didn't apply these. They're in the book for 40 bucks a piece. I called the, our District 9 to see where the town's liability is by putting up these signs. And they haven't got back to me, but we're not going to put them up tomorrow either. I'll just keep it on the agenda. I met with uh, Moore County Planning yesterday. We worked some more on the five-year plan. Uh, Megan is going to be ready probably the next meeting to bring it to the board and propose it to you so you know what's going on. Good, good work with that. All uh, the new people we've interviewed, two people this week. We got a couple more the rest of the week. So by the end of the next next week, we should have a new candidate. Beautiful. That's good news. Yeah. And uh, there's a new policy coming down from the state. A tree warden, fire warden, excuse me, a tree warden, excuse me, tree warden, is got to approve any trees before we can cut them along the highway. State highways? Town highways. So probably the same the state. The state's the one that's pushing it. I got a little information on that. Is Arlo the tree warden still? I'm sorry? Arlo the tree warden? No. No, uh, Mike Green is. Mike Green is. So before we're allowed to cut any trees, we got to get permission. Well, buy some orange tape. We also got a letter from Jim Ryan this week telling us not to dump any snow in the river, which we don't plan to waste. Yeah, it's just probably good practice. Yeah, right. <laughs> Going forward. <laughs> With all the flooding we've had, yeah, I would, I would fill the river. Um, I got an a, a email today from Kim at FEMA, and on um, the week of the week, 9th of March, they're going to give us a call, and we're going to have a 30-minute call, and then they're going to set up some dates to meet with and have our information ready for them. So it is coming around. I don't know how quick after the ninth anything is going to be, but we're having a phone conversation on the ninth. And I told us uh, Joe over there at the Vermont Montpelier about he's one to handle the federal cases, which is the Elmore Pond Road and the North Walker Road. And uh, he's not getting back to me. I'll just keep calling them. Keep on keeping on. And see what they got. And that's 90% of what I got. I don't know if you guys got anything for me. Did you get the um, email about from the Efficiency Vermont guy? No, I. I I'll have to check. I don't think right. I did, but I probably uh, did. Maybe yes. I forgot to forward it. But um, you were talking about LED lights. He has a link in there to get rebates mm -hmm. on high bay LED lights. So if um, if that's something the garage needs, that's probably a good a good route. Yeah, I don't know. We're going to have to do something because it's the third one of them lights that's gone out. The existing lights there now. Yeah. And the last time he knew, well, Bernard got a hold of the guy. And he replaced two of them. And a week later, the another one. Died. So yeah. we'll just keep an eye on that. That's the light. I, I believe two years ago, when we put up the whole thing, we put half of them in and then waited until the new budget came to put the other ones in because they were so expensive. I believe the mice are under warranty. Huh? Yeah, if they're under warranty, then it wouldn't make sense to swap them out. I talked to Wade about that. He didn't seem to say that. Anything about that? They didn't come. Oh, who did they come from? They came from uh, passive, the loss loss prevention. I thought. Uh, no, they came out of Marshville. Uh, oh, who's the guy that put them on? Uh, electrician. 
No. Sure Needham? They came from Needham when they're Needham. Oh, Needham, Needham Electric. Mark those where the white dog came from. And the train. No. I thought Wayne's Electric put them up. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Sorry, I derailed things. Wayne's Electric didn't put them up? No. Well, he's pretend to repair Anyways, them. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so just keeping in mind, LEDs will yeah, last right. forever, use zero power, and you get a half price on them, basically. Yeah. Anything else? You're getting, you're getting good okay. turnout for candidates? You're getting, we don't need to put in the paper or anything? No, getting, yeah. no, we got a guy called today, and I don't want to come in and fill an application, and he said, I, I don't know if he has or not. Okay. Good. So we should, we should have one that's on your computer that you could just email the people right away when they call like that, if that's the case, right? Something right on his desktop, boom, punch it right over, make it simple. I don't, we don't have, but I guess it's, okay. it's easy. Yeah. It's something that any, you know, the copiers in here can do. So just to clarify for you, yeah, I, because she's here about know, the, hor the horse signs. I didn't quite understand where it was left. So the horse signs are what, $40 a piece? They're $40 a piece. I don't know what the, I didn't get a price on the breakaway poles. Okay. So we just have to wait for verification on what liability it is to the town to put these signs up. But but the $40 for the signs would be out of, you got it, not out of the town budget. It would be out of. My budget. That's is, that, is that where it's left? That would be up to the board at that time. Last time we did school bus signs, uh, and, the town put them up. And the posts are roughly 50 bucks a piece. So, so close to $100 a piece for the signs. Yeah. On, on, my, on my shoulders. Uh, that would have to be decided once the liability is ciphered out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So when do you think, you, would that be discussed at the next town meeting or... Would there be any kind of a conclusion on that? Lucian, when do you anticipate possibly hearing back in regards to the liability? Would you would you guess within by the next meeting she could come back and someone could discuss it with her? Hopefully, but I, I could call Jane. Okay. Lucian and ask that. Okay. okay. How's that? Then I'll be here next. Yeah, and Deb can just tell you when I'll to come. Her. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for your consideration. Yeah. yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, we put school bus signs up on Town Hill Road for people before and the town paid for it. It's something similar like that. All right, uh, if that's it for Lucian. Great, well, thank you very much. All right, next is comments from the community. Community. Nothing. All right. Um, I had a question that was brought up to me, and the question was regarding candidates' night. And um, I guess I'll direct it to Deb. Is they were wondering why the listers weren't on the agenda or in any of the advertisements or any of the stuff that's been pushed forward? Just a matter of time. So they'll be put on the agenda for that for candidates' night, or? Why not? I don't know if anybody running. I just, that just brings a question which brought a conversation on amongst a bunch of people that uh, you're up for re-election for Lister. And, and you also are organizing candidates night. So it came up that, you know, for a town of Wilkie event that doesn't seem very transparent. Right. So what I'm saying is that uh, what's listed on the agenda has the select board list or everything like that. So it should be invited in all the advertisements and things like that. And what was brought up is that the fact that Deb's up for re-election and running it looks collusive. But the, and, the candidates' night's not being run by the town of Wolcott, correct? No, or, which, right. Which is the thing, but so yeah. why shouldn't the lister who's on the town of Wolcott, like, 
it just seems. Yeah, no, no. I just didn't want you to think that the town itself was running candidates tonight. No, I no, I want, no, no, no. I wasn't under the impression that that's how that was going. No, I asked about oh, candidates okay. tonight. I asked okay. who was involved in the coalition. I wasn't answered, and I asked a little bit about it, and I wasn't answered. I thought people I'd known would have gotten involved with the coalition for change. I do know people who want to get involved, which is why I'm asking about the listers. That being said. It seems a little bit odd that the person organizing the event happened to leave out the position she's up for re-election for. And that's the comment. And my only thought would be is if it's her event, she could probably do it however she wanted if it's not a town event. If it's a town event, absolutely, 100% agree with you. If it's a... Well... If it, it could, it's not, yeah, if it's a non-town event, then I don't think there's any real guidelines to it. I think it's just something that someone put together was allowed to use the room for. But that's just me. So then at what cost at the municipality if they're using the room to heat the electric mm -hmm. and then someone who's going to get elected by the taxpayers isn't duly represented when someone organizing it already has a position and come instead to win? This looks shady. I need to say it. I need it to be said in public. I've been getting emails for months now. I would think anybody that's up for re-election should be on the list. Should be on the list. The position, maybe not the name, but the position should be on the list. That's the comment. That's the observation. And that's what, I mean, we've seen this advertised. It's on Front Porch Forum. Deb's name's directly linked to the email address for Woke It Citizens for Change. But again, that makes it private. That's my only issue with But it. the thing is, That's why, why wouldn't, why wouldn't all of the elected officials be because up for... Because she didn't choose to do it. Okay, so I'd like no, to no, say no, it looks I'm, collusive. Yeah, then. no, I'm just... Okay. If it was a town planned event, if it, I, I get it. But, like, I could have any private event I want, and I could put whatever I want so on this paper. So, should they be using a municipal building, the heat, the I don't, that I don't know. That's... Well, obviously. I think the taxpayers should answer that question. I'm just explaining what I thought I just, as far as that. This whole thing looks a little bit... And the people I was talking with, I'm not the only one saying this. I was talking with a lot of people who do think that it's a little bit odd. The person who's up for election, who's running the event, just happens to not have the elected position open for the debate, the questions, and candidates night. That's the comment. So to smooth the waters, as I think there's been enough animosity in the last year in this room, Deb, would you be willing to put yourself on your agenda for your candidates night? No, it's not Deb. It's the listeners. But you just said it was Deb. You said Deb's name's all over it. It's on Front Porch Forum, and it's advertised, and her name's on it. Right. So it's but not it's the not listers. Deb in, it's, it's not Deb. Deb in particular. It's the lister position that there's But it's two. her agenda. Okay. Then. Right. So I guess. So would you be to willing her. to put yourself as a lister on the agenda for? There are two listers up. Okay. There are. And uh, so. But at the same point in time, you would have to go through this entire thing and leave it. Anybody's got a town report. No, but I'm just saying, so we really, ultimately, you need to go through and find every single person that is up for re-election and invite everybody, I think is what you're getting at, right? Candidates Night was reading out to be people who are going to be on the warning that were up for election right. and on numerous. that, and, and now the listers are being left out. But they're not the only ones. Meanwhile, there's two listers. Well, the moderator was in, then the moderator right. the was out, the moderator not, was the in, then the moderator not, was out. The town agent's not. But again, so I just happen to you wonder. you want to open for all I'm, of those? I'm just saying, what the comment that was brought up to me is that the person who's organizing it is up for an elected position that is not invited to be a party candidate's night, and that's the comment from the community. Right, and I'm just suggesting how to fix it. I would suggest that the listeners should be part of the invite to be part of candidate's night. Because there are two positions up for a two- and a three-year term. These people manage our grand list, our taxable value, our CLA went down 5%. Yep. Those are all factors. You could, you could even argue that the listers have more impact on the tax rate than the budgets that we do. Because we're not in control of the school, and we're not. In and, uh, we all kind of open to anybody and, and it should be, which is why I'm wondering why they're not invited. And didn't have to be invited because it's an open meeting. So then, I guess, I guess, then the comment would be that the invite was ambiguous, where it led to a little bit of suspicion. It's absolutely. It's absolutely. Which absolutely is why these horrible. conversations are had, because if I'm in a group of people and the conversation comes up and then it's just 
not what you want to hear, 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 then everyone. Some people take it a different way. Uh, tough on them. Another thing here, because so many little people in there don't really understand how everything goes anyway. If you have been here for 50 years, you don't understand anything. Which is the importance of candidate night and the reason why everyone should be invited. You get to know who there. Who are we voting for? Anybody. They should know they can come anyway. Well, the invite reads to specific positions that's inclusive or exclusive but not inclusive. And that's the comment that has to be said. And then the fact that there just happens to be the person organizing it is one of those individuals who've been excluded from the invites. And that is just what the people were saying, which is the comment right. from the community. No, my only comment was I didn't think it was a town organized thing. Right. Well that was all I was saying. I don't I didn't buy are you using municipal. That. Hard to think that yeah, anyways. Yep. So that's the comment. And I think that it would be best if the listers were added to the invite because that is a significant position in this town. It's a little bit different than the agent to do real, real estate, deed real estate, prosecutive defense suits. These are the same people we're putting in every year. Uh, the library trustee, that's a little bit different than people who have their hands on the grand roll, who have their hands on the taxable income, who, have, who go out and inspect the properties. That's significant and I would want any and all candidates to be available for that and I know towns are having trouble doing that and, and getting that position filled yes sir I don't want to prolong this because like somebody said we've been a few of them angst in this town yeah. for a while um, I've always looked at like Bob said candidates I is anybody that wants to run comes raises their hand and introduces themselves. And so I don't know why we haven't had them in the last five or six years. I mean, we used to even have meetings before town meeting that the select board put on for information purposes. They stopped, candidates, they stopped, and everything. My concern here, and I'm only saying this for future advice, all right? Um, My major concern in, in this whole thing is if you read your policy, your policy on political activity by employees, it gets a little gray with your scribe being the point person for this and for um, citizens for change. Citizens for change is not a problem, but poor person for organizing and holding this meeting in a town facility, I would advise you in the future, and Doug, this doesn't need to go, <laughs> please, but I would advise you in the future to read your policy. It's kind of great in terms of what an employee should or shouldn't be doing vis-a-vis political activity in the tank. Period. Mm -hmm. And I hope we'll just leave it at that, learn from that, and move on, damn it. I could agree. I think that for political activity there's been a certain <laughs> amount of privatization and uh you know, it's just, it hasn't been open and transparent to the fact that municipal resources have been being used and or anyone else would be excluded from these events. That being said, is there any other comments or discussion on this topic? Or any others? Yeah. Yes, sir. Go back to Mr. Coffin's talking about having a candidate night and more numbers. The turnout was about with it. It seems to be the overall with everything that happens in this town. Yeah. I mean, nobody shows up because nobody cares anymore. Nobody wants to listen to anything. It's it's pretty bad. It's conversations in my book, Cosmo. Mm-hmm. 
Right. Well, we're not exactly reaching out and being friendly and open armed to people right now when stuff like this is happening around us. Right. Any and, other and comments? The people, and the people who do volunteer, um, what they get when they come to volunteer is 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 causing apathy. To be honest with you. Yeah. Just yeah. Uh, definitely sucks a little bit of personal, air out of the room. My own personal opinion. This stuff all happens around you, and now it's up to our policy. <laughs> we didn't even know it was happening. All right, any other comments from the community? I thank you all because these are conversations that do need to be had. And I'm okay to have them because it's just, it, the taxpayers have to know when all this stuff is happening. And if they're not here, finally it's on video. I'll link this YouTube to everyone and enjoy and let them have this conversation and make their own, up their own mind. Um, new business, increased recycling fees. These yeah. are not going away. No, this so, was Richard's thing. Yeah, Richard left a message on my answering machine saying that he that he wasn't coming, but he wanted to discuss the fifteen dollar per ton increase in charge. He said it's not going away. Basically, what you just said, it's legit. But um, he feels that the uh, increase—I forgot what he said exactly—but the increased business that we get because we are slightly cheaper than the surrounding transfer stations, more than makes up for the increased cost. He said it, it, it'll be trivial um, uh, in comparison, and uh, we should keep on keeping on. That's just oh, Richard's like that. thought. $1,000 a year. So he's got the data that proves that theory? He's got our... Uh, no, I doubt he ran... I doubt he crunched the numbers. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> that's great theory, but... The cost is a thousand a year. Unless we have some uh, data to show that that's an actual <laughs> solid theory. Well, it's, it's going to be theory. hard. How do you know if people are going to stop coming if you... You know what I mean? That's going to be hard to... So discern. we haven't raised our, our price in... in how many, like, we haven't raised, because I remember this conversation last year. We didn't yeah. raise our price. We we raised our price on, I think, on trash so that we didn't have to show a increase on our recyclables. Correct? Uh, like, we I raised can't our remember. We did raise we were, our price. I think that was no, the recyclables we couldn't, we couldn't raise. We tried. Oh, we, we, tried we added, we, if you bring trash, if you don't bring trash, we can yes, charge you for recycling. You, okay. But no one does it. And we upped. Our price is fifty cents for just for the bag to cover that. Yeah, right. yeah. So it was kind of a it was kind of a small increase, but it didn't look like it because we raised the garbage, not the. And according to this, you're already losing twenty five hundred dollars a year on recycling. So I'm thinking. But we're in the green on the transfer station on the annual. Well, imagine what you'd be if you weren't losing twenty five hundred dollars a year. Can't do on anything about that. Well, that's that's what Richard <laughs> said. <laughs> Richard <laughs> said yeah. that if you do increase the recycling, then your slips for trash will go down because people will stop coming. Once again, you know it's because it's, we can. But if we're still cheaper than someone else, right? So how, what are the regular price? So we're we're doing we're zero. Right? right. So everyone else has got is charging. So if we were to raise our prices by half, we'd still be cheaper than everyone else. So that theory might still. Yeah, it may. This sounds like a good project for our transfer station specialist. Who's that? That is Richard. Even if you charge a dollar. I don't think you can by the state statute. I think but I thought you to... could. I thought that changed. Only if you they could, did. but we chose not to if they brought trash. Yeah, I think that's the way it went down. Yeah. That's a good I mean, question for a dollar for a bag of recycled. Yeah. Anything uh, to what, take that What we just need to do is build a grid and price out. See what everybody else is charging. And, yeah. yeah. And just under, under bid them. Yeah. They're still cheaper. Yep. Which Maybe we can have Richard get us some prices from... I think that's the plan. I think that's the plan. The that is the yeah. plan. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Just a little bit of thing for you. If you charge, you can't charge for recycling. I, yeah, I think well, that's what I'm some, trying to remember because there was that is the well, rule because they're only increasing it because now we have to do food scraps and it by another year or two we have to do all food scraps. It's going to be against the law for you yeah. to throw food scraps out, and yeah, we so have to accept have to all that for free. Compost. And that's yeah. starting in what July first. I sent you that email. Remember yeah. July, 1st, and we're set up for it, but we don't have to haul anything because no one's no one's bringing any. But in, a, in two years from now, when everyone has to. Right, but right now your another, recycling is only free at our transfer station if you bring trash. We have, we have a little, we have a setup. You know, we have a trash can. So something's not right. Wood if flakes, so people can dump their compost and throw some wood chips on top of it. Just to satisfy the law, it doesn't fill up. 
I mean, I've not seen a lot of trash decided to load like we have been in the past. Well, everyone that's kind of agrees all that having that place open is a real benefit <laughs> like, like, to the right. town. Right. My face is on fire. Is it bad? We lost money, I think, five of my first or like four of my first six years on the select board, we lost money. I mean, I walked in as some sort of electronic waste mess. Yeah. And now we almost had a soul. It almost earned us money with the solar, but hardly. Yeah, there, there's new life for that. There's new life for that. But if you raise the price on the trash, you will get we need to know if we can charge for recyclable or we can't. Yeah, and if we too. can't, we raise the trash bags a dollar and we make up for not being able to charge for the recycle. Or, yeah. we, or we do it that way anyway. That way, recycling is still free. I know some solids up here. You take your tra trash, it's five dollars for them, and wait back, and your recycling is free. Well, that's what ours. I know. If they you charge pay, for your recycling if you get roadside pickup, though, if you're Casella. So I don't know how yes, we have to offer yes. free, but they, they, they haul it. So right. we need to send our town guys around. But as so, long as you bring one bag at hours, your recycling is free. And you could have a whole Christmas and weekend. And we charge three, right? No, we're up, we're up, trash. We're up to it's worth. No, it's five it's seven nine. But re recycling five dollars. Five seven nine. Five seven nine. And the little white bag is three. Yeah. Recycling uh, costs double what it costs just to throw it away. Just no, just we don't want to go back there, but just just say. So I have a question double. maybe for the highway department <laughs> is um, throw it away. What about compactors? Or we got uh, cardboard compactors and stuff like that. I mean, I've seen it since I went. Yeah, I was gonna we say they just weigh your your uh, it's off. Not by, oh, it's right. So you're just gonna right. pack more into it. Yeah. We go out. Save, save some. Save Tuesday, some travel costs. Either on a Friday or Definitely. a Monday or Tuesday. Come back. Absolutely, save holiday. some travel costs. And the hauling. Yeah. Well, so what he does then is what he does is final. If he just brings it down with the. Front. So, so Richard should do a cost comparison of surrounding towns. Yeah, and, and, and we'll see start they there. charge for recycling. Yeah, and, and see uh, if I there's can any help with that. and canister vendors haulers that we were talking about. Definitely find out if we can haulers. or can't. Haulers, hmm. haulers. I know a lot of people. Like because them. well, yeah. we need, and we need to be, and that's the other convenient thing is that we're open when people are around. You can and, also find out if other towns subsidize them in their budget because. It may reach that point. It matters a service that the town that you absorb the transfer station into your town budget. Citizens. And there's going to be a direct correlation between the ease, cost, with which people can bring stuff there and dispose of it, and what we find in yards and around. <laughs> well, it's true. That's and when you look at the bottom dollar, you're technically absorbing eight hundred and seventy-one dollars. Look at what they charge in the towns. Look to see if they also. I can't believe the celebrity spend the time on trash that you are. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> 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 oh, um, <laughs> it's the only other revenue source we have in this town. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> we missed out on the solar fields. That was really good. I'm sitting here thinking, maybe you've got to start your own composting business. <laughs> You know, we'll get you now we'll get a, comp a compactor, but a composter, and we can mark it. We'll get a compost. I and still, Bill, I still, run it. I still think it'd be worthwhile to actually put it out to bid on an annual basis, just to see if it'd be worth it. Yeah, if it's solely a cost question, then yeah, I, I would think because that makes if sense. so, if if a if a if someone who owns a business could come in and operate at a profit and pay us monthly rent. Oh, it's, the it's not able to be line item separately. It says it says transfer station recycling cost signage can say one dollar of your trash bag fee pays for recycling transportation okay, costs. That's what it was. But it can't. So it sounds like I'll send this. This was this was that. the Vermont agency of that's what they do. That's how yeah. they word it. Okay, great. That's transfer talk. Um because haulers can't do it. Hyde Park Johnson Wolkett Sheriff's Committee. Is that you? Uh well we skipped over the gate. Yeah, you skipped two things. Oh, I'm sorry. Why do I have checks here? I don't know. You skipped the gate replacement. Recycling. Oh, I saw trans I was yeah, the recycling and the transfer. That's why I did it. I double checked it. So uh gate replacement. I understand, Bernard, you were looking into I have. 
I, I uh, got two prices for that gate, one price for Magway at 159 and it can be here within two days, or tractor supply for $199.99, and they have them right there on the end. What happened to the gate? The it looks like someone hit it. He totally squashed it. Oh, like bumped it. They hit the gate and it caught on the wing of the truck. Yeah, I was going to say, it didn't like get backed into it, like got, yeah. Pulled. On the wing, you said? Yeah. yeah. And the evolution is right here. I am willing to work with whoever wants to go up there with a bucket loader and clean up all that snow that's up on the top and get it away from the dumpsters and clean around them gate posts so that gates open like they're supposed to be like they have been done in the past winters. The gate's down by the road down or by the road. down by the road? What's happened in the snow? Yeah, they, yeah, they, they look like they're trying to push piles. And... I understand you saw it Saturday or Sunday, Eric, when they decided they were going to happen. Yes. So it still functions. It's so not. Gate you want it's closed. To, I will get it and closes so, and opens. It closes just, and opens. Just all. It's and all and smashed. 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 You sure that bucket loader can pull the gate back together with a we nice mallet and hammer? that and fast get the bog trying to straighten it the first time. It broke it. Oh, that's right, because I think Mark tagged that once too. Broke it off. Okay. So, is the gate ever a security concern? So the gauge of the gate does yeah. that even matter? Oh. Yeah. It keeps them from break, breaking in and stealing all the models that go to the cancer society and breaking in, stealing the cash register and the solar thing up there. Um, oh, because there's a lock on the gate. Yes, there's a fat lock on the gate, and the boys all have a key to it, whoever one goes there for. In fact, they can help you respond to any people that are going to throw trash in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it makes sense to me to go the with gate. the Agway gate. Yep, we need to go with the Agway gate. Well, is there a difference in the gauge and the heft no, of it? No, they're the same gauge. Just one's pick up tomorrow. Okay. Same, same, same size bike. Right. The, that, there, there are six bar gates and uh, they're 14 foot long. More secure than the last one? Yes. Uh, same. Yes. Yeah. More secure than the last one? Same. That's pretty no, secure if other, it takes a down town truck to ruin it. The other one was on the other side of the truck. <laughs> this is the big one. Oh, all right. All right, so just the one wing, that's right. Okay. All right, well, I mean, sounds like it needs to be replaced, so I can't see why we wouldn't go ahead and go with the cheaper one of the same version of the same thing. Yep. Uh, and are you saying that there's some work that needs to be done around the posts? The so then, Lucian, if... Uh, the tr if the highway department doesn't get to the snow, get in touch with Bernard and he'll give you a hand getting that done. Yeah. Cool. All right, so then I'll make a motion to go ahead and purchase the Agway gate for $159 to be delivered in roughly two well, days. that's $159 plus tax. No tax. Oh, they might be. There you go. Then they yeah. I do know we have to try to get on the Agway. So the road crew is going to install the new gate? I will. So only one bolt. So the way I've got them set up. Okay, so. So sort of being in the purview of the highway, are you comfortable with that, Lucian? Yeah, and just who's going to deliver the gate? That's all I want. I'll just go get it. You'll just go get it. Well, you can you back my truck? I don't know. That's a, that's a. Is that a question? Yeah, you can. What do you mean I can't? Are you cleared to do that? I got a grandson to back up and need do everything. No, 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 no. I'm saying, are you cleared by? It's not really something we can talk about on the record, no, but I do you see what that. I'm saying? I got a grandson to tell you. But Very not on the payroll or insured or... If you're liability. Yeah. Well, I've got everything with the family. Yeah. I go get that salt once a month. Let's... Let's go ahead and leave this in the purview of the highway department. So we have Lucian and Patrick and Dylan, or excuse me, Lucian, Dylan, um, Right for now, just to go ahead and make make the motion on it to buy the gate. So, Lucian, for now, let's just have you do it um, while we figure out this that's this particular situation at hand. Okay. Um, just to sort of keep the town insured and liability free. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Next day it ain't snowing, we'll go and do it. Cool. Perfect. All right. So I made a motion. Uh, second. We're going to buy the gate at Agway. Yep. Correct. By Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I, I didn't hear what you said. I apologize. So be, because of the unknown status of his employment, I made the motion to go ahead and evolution spearhead this okay. thing and get the yep. gate fixed yep. from Agway. Who is in charge of dealing with it, this issue? No. No, no, no. The other issue. No, we're talking about the gate now. Yeah. Motions for Lucian made by me, seconded by Michael. All those in favor say aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay, so Lucian, thank you very much. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, financials transfer station slash town. Is that? So just a quick note. These are in front of you. The only, the only issue that I see that you're going to see is if you look at the transfer station at the top, it says July 1, 2019 through February 19, 2020, which is correct, which is today. But then if you go look at the town, P and L budget versus actual. The ending date is actually June 2020. So the line that's budgeted is showing you what's budgeted through June 2020, not what's budgeted through today. So this budget, like this, is for that date. That's through okay. June. It okay. should be through today. Okay. To make this as Apple accurate samples. as possible for you to look at at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's. I would actually. Suggest that it be changed and resent. Right, send it kind so of that you get a better apple oranges. Yep, but that's okay. just that's what I would have to say on that. Okay, so it sounds like no motion needs to be made there. So, Thank you. Deb, could you just ask Allison to resend the corrected Town of Woke Up PL budget versus actual using February 19th instead of June 2020? The transfer station is fine. But if we're going to look at one at a different time, it would make sense to look at both at a different time. Perfect. Eric. Yes, sir. Gentlemen in the back. Oh, yes. What is the net impact financially of the transfer station on town? Is it a positive or is it a negative? We've been in the green the last two As years. As of right now, you're, yeah, you have 871. 871 positive? Yep. Yeah, we had a um, we had a fine that came because we stored electronics yeah. wrong prior to my arrival at the board. So we had a, it was like 25 and we talked it down to 15. So we've been paying that off. And then the idea was to cap, once we capped it, was to get a solar field in there to get revenue, which we were told was going to work at one time. And uh, you, you saw the state legislature demanding that, uh, th there's a bill on the floor right now that forces local utilities to buy local renewable power and that would, usher it in. that would usher it in eventually. Yeah, especially something on municipal. All right, next is the uh, sheriff's committee. Mike, is that you? Yeah, so um, at, at the sheriff's request and Johnson's organization, uh, a, a select board member from High Park, Susan Bartlett and Johnson, uh, Nat Kinney, and I met to discuss the future of the sheriff's budget. It's a committee that's looking at providing towns, this, this tri-town commission, with um, a, affordable quality uh, law enforcement protection. Uh, the concern actually from the sheriff is that um, towns aren't going to keep approving his budgets and maybe we have to rethink law enforcement. So that's what this commission sets up. Um, the reason it's here is because um, the request is that the Wolkett Select Board uh, authorizes this commission. Uh, Johnson and Hyde Park will do the same. And the agendas and the meeting minutes will go on all three websites. Um, but uh, we are looking for a motion from this board to authorize the commission. Um, so. I wanted to make that motion, but I wanted to answer any questions or. Um, so. so the commission ultimately meets in the best interest of the towns collectively. Yeah, there'll be one select board member and then one citizen is what we're thinking right now from each town that, uh, yeah, is looking. How can we uh, have a sustainable budget? So keep mm -hmm. in mind that Johnson and High Park are paying 40 percent of the sheriff's budget where we're paying 20. Mm -hmm. So they're seeing a lot more pressure. 
but it's in our best interest too because you know sheriff's budget is cheap and it sounds yeah. like you're willing to be our representative from the select board yeah yeah if you don't in, unless somebody else wants it and um we can all choose the citizen that we think would be best when that time comes when that time comes <laughs> I'll second. Oh, okay. So uh, I'll make a motion to authorize the Wolkett Sheriff's Committee with, uh, in conjunction with Hyde Park and Johnson. And it was seconded by Jen. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 It's worth it. Yeah, that it's worth it. That Maybe some good ideas will come scheduled about. Scheduled to go up 3% in the next three years. Yeah. Each of the next three years yeah. anyways. And it's just a talking point. It's just a conversation. It's just it's a not, conversation. It's not making decisions on our behalf or anything. No, it's no, just, no. Yeah. And then a plan will be presented. Right. right. Which would again have to yep. be approved by whoever yeah, exactly. sits among these seats. Yeah. Opportunity to collaborate too. Yeah. In different right, ways, right. right? We all share the cost. Uh next next is the town clerk budget twenty twenty one. Yeah, so I, I asked this one to be on here too, uh, because we we did our budget, just a little rehash, we did our budget because we didn't know what the town was gonna, uh, we did our budget with two individuals in mind for the town clerk and the treasurer because we didn't know how the town uh, would, would vote. Um, that said, the town may very well vote to have one person as town clerk and commissioner, uh, treasurer. And right now, um, for two people, we had 32 hours for a town clerk uh, and 20 hours for a treasurer. That's what our current budget has, right? It's 52 hours. One person can't work that. So the idea was always to make a motion from the floor to amend it. The question becomes, what do we amend it to? And uh, uh, also for any candidates that are running, they need to know what they're fixing to get paid if they get elected. So I was wondering if anybody had any ideas on that. I was just opening the floor for that discussion. And can we do it like, if it's two people, option A. If it's one person, that's the idea, right? Can we? Yep. Make, if it's two people, that? leave it as is. Yep. If one person gets elected, this then, is what it is. Yeah. Then a, a motion from the floor would need to be so made. So you'd have to, you'd have to get the town clerk and treasurer down to forty hours, no more, because then you'd be paying overtime. But it's a salaried position. Right. It's a salaried so it wouldn't position. Be overtime. You're just yeah, you're you're not thinking hourly, you're just looking for a rate. <laughs> yeah. You're looking, you're looking for a salary. And then you need to yeah, up the assistant town clerk from what we have proposed. Um is what I would imagine. That's, that's that wasn't the goal of this discussion, no. but if that was part of it, then have well, at it. Well, where's the extra twelve? That was hours? what that was what Linda had said. With she had broken down into the hours of the job, right? Is that where we got the fifty-two? She said that yeah. twenty was for yeah treasure Not and thirty-two. Yeah, she said she thought it was twenty and twenty, pretty much split down the middle as far as time, responsible time and responsibility. <clears throat> so, and and to Eric's point, we have twenty-four hours budgeted for an assistant town clerk because we added a ten thousand dollar bookkeeper. Which, if there's the correct skill set, that ten thousand dollars wouldn't need to be budgeted out. Could be budgeted for more hours. I'm not I'll sure about that. Right. I still don't understand. I thought there was some like checks and balances. It, you know, Kim, maybe you know. There's the you want the bookkeeper because the same person doing the books can't authorize the paychecks or something like that. Well, right now, that's why you have a select board member that approves all of your all of your orders before the office cuts the checks and sends them out. I think Linda's thought on the um, outside bookkeeper, and I could totally be misspeaking, so please, Doug, <laughs> um, is because, like right now, they had someone come in and do all of the uh, journal entries for the year end all of the um prepaids and so on and so forth you may you you may wind up with someone that can do that you may not wind up with someone that can do it. this is kind of uncomfortable for me as it's pretty apparent that i'm running for town clerk but that's okay you're yeah not, you know. um so whether or not you're really going to need that ten thousand dollars is going to depend on who you have sitting in that position which is what which is what we thought so yeah. I thought that if we didn't, 
if that per if the so we I thought we had done the base twenty four hours for the assistant with the ten thousand because we assumed that that assistant mo most likely wasn't going to be the person that was going to have that skill set, but we if we have somebody in the treasurer town clerk position who is is skilled in that, then I was thinking that that ten thousand dollars that was set aside for that higher skilled person wouldn't we wouldn't need that. So therefore, if they needed an assistant to work more than twenty four hours, then instead of having a skilled person that we don't need, those extra hours say for those busy times when when you somebody needs the assistant more because there's more going on, then they would have that ten thousand dollars to draw on miscellaneously, like Linda had said, the miscellaneous for those times when. There's more work than the hours. And then you would draw off, okay, so this, I have $10,000 for per diem work, whatever I want per diem. So if I need the assistant for more hours this week, then I have a $10,000 bucket that I say, hey, I'm going to take four hours and my assistant's going to work 30 because I have a project that I need help with. Or she's going to, that's what I was assuming we could kind of use it for. Yeah, that makes sense. So currently, if we hired, we budgeted, if we hired two people, the town clerk would work 32 hours, the treasurer would work 20 hours, um, and the total cost for that is 54. So I think the biggest issue with what you have sitting here right now is your town clerk is a salaried position. You don't know that that person's going to work 32 hours or right. they're going to work 50 hours. Right, right, right. Yes. So going by an hourly rate. I totally agree. I totally agree. Is ultimately not it was going to more, totally agree. It was just to get it, a it sense. It was more of a way to add for people to understand the, the yeah. amount. Yeah. Right. So. And the other problem is, is you, and this is from, you can take me and set me over there if you'd like. From my perspective, as somebody who is potentially running for your town clerk's position, your first vote is your town clerk's position. Mm -hmm. And then you are gonna vote on your treasurer's position. And then half, three quarters down your agenda, you're gonna change what you're gonna pay this person that just accepted this job on the budget that right. you gave them. It's crazy. And That's on top of difficult. that, you don't even know their skill sets. Yeah. How do you know their skill sets? Because they say it. You can't check their backgrounds, yeah, you can't check their references, you can't yeah. check their employment history, you can't even look at their qualifications to yeah. when we do now it. Now I way. know. That's well, the chance to appoint a town treasurer comes before electing a town treasurer. Yeah, and Hyde Park is doing this. Hyde and Park that, is that asking is the town to be to able to appoint a treasurer and town clerk for just right. this reason. Yep, yep. Um, for a lot of reasons, I mean, it's more than just some of these. It's more than just those two. Excuse right. me. And it's again, by separating those two positions that haven't generally been separated in the past, you may get someone for town clerk. You turn around, somebody else gets treasurer, and then neither one of them wants it because they can't give up a full time position where they already are to take on a part time position. Right. Right. So it's it's going to be kind of a really muddy mess. It is. We're just going to have to work the, together as a, as a town yep. to do what's best for the town yep. office, and yep. hopefully, no personal stuff enters it. But we're getting sidetracked here. So, so yeah, as dysfunctional as any other town. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I think so the question, more. Mike, is that we are the amount of money that we've booked is based off of fifty-two hours, not forty. That's right. And maybe we can't determine it right now. Maybe it's too big of an ask. But I thought it would be nice to give candidates some idea of what they'd be looking at if they decided to run. Yeah, I would agree on that. <clears throat> so I'll throw out an idea. I'll be the first person. I should probably get my head off. Here, but, I'm going um, over here. So, this just doesn't seem appropriate for me to be involved in this. I'm going over here. So in talking with Linda, um, and, and, you know, noodling through this budget, I think it would make sense right now if the same person got it, this is just my personal feeling, um, if we offered a $50,000 uh, total package. So that would be the salary for both the town clerk and the treasurer, plus an estimated $15,000 in receipts. And what, what is the current budget? Now, what is the current budget for town clerk and the, treasurer? The current budget for town clerk and treasurer, you mean what, what is, what is, is Linda it? or what is the 
the yes. proposed. No, what is the person making now? Um, roughly 46. <clears throat> Plus 15. No, including no, the 15. Including the 15. Yeah. So that we're looking at a four, we're looking at a twenty thousand dollar increase from last year to this to this year. No, because it's not including. She, he just said fifty thousand dollars plus the. Oh no no sorry fifty thousand dollars including okay. the receipts. I was like whoa yeah. maybe I'll run <laughs> fourteen twenty grand twenty grand extra right? No. I want no. <laughs> this does not include insurance. <clears throat> 25 grand. 20, we're, we're 25 estimating 27. Grand. Yeah. 25 The insurance grand. in town is, is ridiculous. Uh, our, our, our employees paid nothing for medical it's, insurance. Yeah. So, it's but really one problem at a time. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah. Um, and, and I don't think we should address insurance because we have a highway crew that was hired on the back of that insurance. So I would fight really hard not to pull I, insurance it's out. Too it's, it's too late now. It's too late now. This is the insurance we got. We inherited that. So, yeah. so that's just one idea. Um, I, I would. So then, what, I'm sorry. So then I just lost track. So how? What is the increase from from last budgeted year to this budgeted year? So four thousand. It's it's about nine grand. Nine grand. If we had two people. Nope, just one. That's well, but we budgeted for two. Right, but, but we're, this is we're taking this off the board. We're taking the two off the board is what it sounds like. Uh, sorry. Uh, currently, it's 46 grand. Right? Okay. As we, one position. As, as one, one position. Yeah. We budgeted for 54 as two. For positions. the two. Right. right. I'm proposing that if it goes to one, we do... we amend the budget to 50. And I'm proposing that we get, maybe this whole amending on the floor is not a good idea and we just make this really easy and say, it doesn't really matter whether it's one person or two, I will agree with the $50,000, one person or two, and then that's what it is. The problem, and I, I hear you, the problem is um, you, the town clerk is a full-time-ish job. Right. Well, the, according to the to the book, not it's it's however long it takes to get the work done, which depending on who this person is could be could be a perspective thought or a actually getting the job done thought. To be honest with you, because the law says that it's it's their hours are when they get the job done. So, so if so nobody you... understands what the job is, which clearly we don't, uh, we, it could be a 10 hour a week job, it could be a 40, I have no idea. So what you're saying is we did it backwards. We should have budgeted for a single person and then amended on the floor for a double. For the double probably, yeah. But hindsight, totally. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. I think I don't think a there's a way to amend anything until we get to the floor on town meeting day. We've got to run with what we've presented and then roll with the uh, punches as they've been dealt. Because it's already been we've it's already applied. Right. Right. We can't change anything. No, no, no. Right. But we can give some guidance as to the select board thinks this and will make a motion to amend the budget. And if the town agrees, at least it gives some target for the candidates. It's a target right there between 46 and 54. So that's the range now. Right now. On, like, it's a target with that nice insurance policy. Right. Um, I, I, I don't think you're. The LA, I guess, well, it's 54 for two people. So, right. right so, the right. individual. Right. So, you're okay with that? I mean, it's, okay. it's what we presented and we've warned and we've got to roll with it. How do, how do we move forward if it's one or two people? That's. But, Again. but hold on. The, the plan when this budget was developed was to do just this. But right. to amend it on the floor. Right. You're just asking right. for some final numbers right. to pre present to the, on the 25th. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, so, I mean, these numbers are so close that spread over through all the taxpayers over through town. So really I'm not sure what you're. What you're That's, I mean, I'm fine with these numbers because there's not really a huge swing in the grand scheme of things at the end of the day for what our budget is at two point. Five million dollars, but then, but that then all the math in our budget doesn't make sense because our budget was devised on a fifty-two hour. Right, right. So I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm okay with what you're suggesting. 
Oh, you're okay with to the, how it would change, how little it would change the budget. Oh, I presented. Okay. I'm okay with sorry, I misunderstood. Yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, I projected wrong. It's a little number. It's not very much. It goes up, though. That's what you're going to ask the taxpayers. That's where I, we... I was going to say this. It goes down. I, want, I, want, I got my... Uh, <laughs> and I want to compliment you on how you put the budget together. Um, a lot of people are... It's not going to understand, you know, what you had to go through. But I think anybody that really listens and tries can. You, you had to budget the worst case scenario because you don't know. Right. All right. And I've said this to you before. I think your immediate job right after town meeting is to get together with whoever's elected town clerk and come up with salary and the organization for the town how you're going to organize moving forward i think that's critical we're not going to do that on the floor at town meeting nor do i think we should be talking about time or salaries on the floor at town meeting i mean a lot of the different ways you put this together you might wind up saving four or five thousand dollars so and that's good. really all, all we're talking about, yeah. Right, so good. I mean, there's a good chance with the way things are going, I don't know what number three's going to be. You're going to need that next year. I mean, I look at the budget again, and I'll, I'll say this till I'm blue in the face. You pull out, you did, you pull out the store, not even counting all the other stuff that's going on with the roads crew and everything this year, and the town office and the organization, you're talking about a 6% increase in the budget. Now, I don't like paying taxes any better than anybody else, but I know what y'all have been through. And that's the reason why don't go tying your hands behind your back right now. Leave yourself some flexibility for the sake of this town and for the organization of this town moving forward. I don't think any candidate who I know that's declared for Town clerk has come in and says, What are you going to pay me? They've done it, I think, because they want to serve the town and feel they're qualified to serve the town. And I think we're damn lucky that we've got those kind of candidates. Damn lucky. Uh, so don't, don't, don't overthink it, Mike. So, so you're saying this is a futile exercise and we shouldn't do this. I, I don't think and we should do it now. Other than you've, you've expressed for the record what you think is a fair return, and I think that's very admirable and that is fair. But I wouldn't go forward with that written in stone until you see all the givens. And you're not going to see all the givens until after we get through town meeting. And don't make it any more complicated than it is already going to be. I guess that's my generally good advice working within what we presented i do think bill has a good point in a sense where you really aren't going to know how all the cards shuffle exactly into place until we know who the individuals are who are filling the gaps and you'll you'll so we really can't so so what what you're kind of saying is that clearly nobody can no well salary person can work 52 hours that's what i work <laughs> but but anyway um we the person can't work 52 hours. So they're going to assume that they're going to work 40 hours. And so basically, clearly these hours are, are inconsequential. So really, regardless of whether this is one or two people, the one person will most likely be getting close to this, mm -hmm. basically. It's basically a wash because you, it's really, it was a nice extra, it, it was, it was, we were trying. We were trying to do like be really like, really specific and organized and like really like A and B, but which we really can't do. You're right. So it's it's. We can hope that they work forty hours. We can hope they will work forty hours and be open five days a week, but we can't control that. Right. So this is probably what they're going to get. Some administration time. You don't know whether the assistant clerk, full time or part time, can be the bookkeeper. You don't know all these things but you've got yourself covered 
if we had to go outside and get somebody out else or thing. So we're good. Just we're good. Your options open. The bottom line for the town, it, you know, it made seventy-five thousand dollars, but Lord knows what, like I said, uh, what the next day would bring. Right. So I mean, that's. I, I, I won't. I won't push it if there's no appetite to do this from the board. This I was think, just the plan. I think, and I was following through with the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I think, think what you demonstrated though is how little of an effect. That might have if it's just such a small swing between one or two people. The possibility is there for us to be able to work with it. No, Mike, don't get me wrong. I think. I think oh, no, no, that no, is, I'm not offended or anything. Yeah. I think that gives a good indication to do it with running what the ballpark is, uh, and, I, and I think that's necessary. Uh, let's keep the, let's keep our options open. Okay. Good. This just came out of out of procedure. Are you allowed to call? Um, Executive session at town meeting day. Me? No, no, no. It would the board be allowed to? Like in theory, would the board be allowed to call an executive session on a town meeting day on a, a duly worn meeting? Well, I, I say yes. Because if it was a special meeting like we had for the TA that time, could we have called an executive session? Or if budget tweaks needed to happen, is that something? Well, I don't know. Town, just wondering out loud. That's all there is. Like or is it a town meeting? I'm, I'm asking about town board. meeting. Yeah. No, town meeting itself. Because we yeah, can I do don't it think, I don't think you could. Uh, is a town meeting a select board meeting? Or no. Meeting? Yeah, no. it's a select board meeting. But no. it's a, it's a duly in charge of town it's meeting. It's a duly worn meeting. Well, it just is. the moderator. So is this one? Board. Right. Yeah. I, I would. I don't know. That's just oh, a question I, I have about a procedure. It's more about Robert's rules than anything. I would think. Not that I'm going to lose the audience. <laughs> yeah, twenty five people will not come back. <laughs> You'll go from eighty to sixty down to twenty. No, I meant yeah. you. Yeah. If you really I'm want to ram something through the executive session, then the first ten minutes, right? The first yeah, ten minutes. <laughs> executive session for coffee and dance. Yes, Wait long ever. enough to see how many cars are gone, yes, and then re go into yeah. session once the parking lot's empty. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah, that's what we have now. As so. long as everybody was re-elected, right? Because there'd be new people. Well, like, well, who depends. would be in the executive? Well, it's all when, when it's called. Jen's like, no. <laughs> well, that's what Bill's saying. It could be used as a, as a strategy. <laughs> all right, moving along. We have the Lister's printer replacement. So the Lister's need one, too? I thought they shared the, share it with the... I don't know. Let's listen. No, it's... They have one in their office. Linda has one in her. Printer, not the copy. The printer for the computer. The printer for the computer. computer. And so a replacement for, which is comparable to what we have the from WB Mason would be $199. They don't know. Well, what why do don't you, you just, why don't you just hook, hook your computers up to the printer and. To the copier. To the copier and use that. Are you networked here, Deb? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they weren't before when I was. We have money in the budget for. Yeah, and how how much is it? One ninety. One ninety. It's not the printer that's the problem. That's I right. guarantee you that ink is three times cheaper, that though. Right? <laughs> Just to uh, yeah, but focus. apparently we're not networked, so you can't do network. Printing. That lasts for yeah. That's not full. So it's in your budget then. Is what you're saying, right? Are we? Um, we're not doing reappraisal or anything, any major jobs coming up that you're running through that thing, right? right. Okay. I thought they paid so you need a motion to approve term. it? Is that what we need here? I don't know. If it, no, it's a heads up. I don't right. know if under the procurement if it's, policy. No, it's, it's you know, cheap enough, right? It, <laughs> yeah. But it's just uh, letting you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. listeners need a printer. They should get a printer. Let's just say, please say we're not going to argue over $199. Nope. No, I will say, though, um, I did call the listers to get my listers card, and I noticed on the website that the listers don't have any information on it at all. They don't have um, contact information, hours, or the name of the lister. Everyone else is on there who's in the municipality, so I just wanted to point that out. I think it should be added, especially because a lot of listers don't work normal bankers' hours, and if you're like me and you go to town offices, Oh, I, thought right, I, I know it's not. I found it weird because mm -hmm. I emailed, didn't hear back, so I went to grab the number off the website, but then couldn't find it anywhere, which led to a search. Yeah. 
where I couldn't find anything. So under the departments tab, there's no, the listers don't lie. have one. So I think that would be an upgrade for the town's website. Maybe, yeah. Yes, yeah, so they're double the thing. Uh, the mowing contract. So Bladesdale called Friday, wanted to know if we still wanted to mow these properties. Also, we need help cleaning up the debris at the North Wilkie Road ball field. Please check with Lucian on debris cleanup because it could possibly be a FEMA or reimbursement, or is it wetlands? Yeah, I got it on, I, when I sent FEMA the list of roads, I put that on there too. Uh, I, they do something. I honestly don't know. Yeah, they talk about cleaning up yeah, debris fields. Do. Okay, well, I, I have an individual who's interested in getting in, involved in town who's been asking me about stuff that he could get involved with, and he actually offered to help clean up that field. So I can go ahead and get that information and send it to you because he's he, he wants to get involved, just doesn't know how. He feels yeah. it's inclusive. So that being said, I wouldn't go I wouldn't go out for any bids just yet for the mowing until we know whether there's FEMA reimbursements or whether this guy would be willing to help. Because once he's done plowing driveways, I think okay. he has time. When he gets around, we have to give me a call. All the information for you back when we when I tell we had a big flood down so that they were treating the stuff in the well right. They did let us take over the elevator. Okay. Now I'm not sure if they still honor that. Because I know that was going to be a problem down the road. Down the road. So there still might be permissions running yeah. in perpetuity from the last storm. I have a 97 question for you. Why did they <coughs> stop allowing towns to clean out the oh, riverbanks? Right. Yeah. Because it goes way behind those trees. It wouldn't even be does. over by the ball field. Why Why did we they know that? that? <clears throat> we were doing it. We put all this stuff up on. Class four roads, right? Like that. And Governor Dean called me on a Sunday morning, at quarter to eleven, and he said, "Why are you digging in the river?" And I said, "We aren't digging in the river." He said, "Yes, you are." I said, "No, we're not. That's not classified as a river. That's classified as a book." And he says, "I can't keep up with these smart runners." <laughs> He was saying that other towns had given him such a hard time that we were digging up through there. And we wanted to clean it from one end to the other. Right, so that it didn't keep flooding. But he said he couldn't right? let us do it. Because if we did it, he'd have the other towns do it. So he last quite uh, But it would prevent all these catastrophic well, events. Where more engineers got involved in it. And he brought those in and he said, well, I'll take it. He says, no, we don't need them. He said, well, we can't give you the money. He said, we don't want any of them. Just leave us alone. Right. But you can't catch that river without core engineers being involved. Well, yeah, that's, that's what he just said. I was just curious why, though. North You've had all these catastrophic events since they stopped letting you clean Cambridge out site. these rivers. Yeah. Even though they approved one. They got to approve every site. Yeah, you can't because you can't silt it up. It gets into the lake. Well, I mean, it's so costing much. millions of dollars for flood repair when you wouldn't have it if you cleaned out the yep. riverbeds. Yep. Just curious. Just curious. It. We saw those overheads that Tyler sent us. Interesting. From East Engineering. Uh, Right, I gotta stop doing that. So Deb, That's an action for Eric line. to get in touch with um, his plowing friend. I'll have that phone on me, so I don't have his name right in front of me. Um, and then I'll coordinate with you about that, Lucian. If you want to check into whether or not it's FEMA or whether or not it's flood zone that would prevent us from putting yellow machinery in there, okay. I don't know if it would or wouldn't. But it's all the way up to the backstop. I mean, there's a yeah, lot. I, the yeah. way I understood it, and I talked to the state a little bit about it. Talk to the Athletic Association, see if they're replacing it. The so they said that what they normally do on FEMA now is you collect everything in a pile, and they measure it up, and they pay you on a cubic yard. That's going to suck. Paid by the pile. Okay. Just bring it to my house and dump it. I have a big hole I need to fill. Hey, what how I'm is the process? Lying, I really do. So what's the process for for um, getting if you want um, clean fill? What what do we have to do for the town? Do we know? Does anybody know? Well, we gotta ask. 
Just yeah. ask. Yeah. Ask if who. We're in, if we're in it depends on what area they're in. It's, yeah. It's feasible for us to get in and out, and we're not going to do any property damage. Yeah. We'll be glad to give it to you. Okay. Well, we si sign me up. I was going to say, uh, sign yeah. me up. I got a big hole. All right, so next under unfinished Please business was the warning sign by Miss Melfi. The only thing I want to uh, mention to that is the last time we had concerned citizens, it was for school buses on Town Hill. And um, we put those signs up. The town paid for them, and we had them up as soon as possible. So I don't know if you could get into the ground right now. And I, those won't go until the spring anyway. I got to look in that. Federal book over there and try. They got a limit if that it's Douglas Road, right? I think they want it on the pond road right. at the foot of Douglas yeah, yeah, yeah. Road. Douglas Road. So right. How many feet up the road do I have to put that sign? And how many feet down the road do I have to put the other sign? Right. Yep. You have to make so, it legal. You'd have to get the they regulations on it. Bunch of crap in that book. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yep. Yeah. So there's a lot that governs it, but that's. Oh. I just wanted to say that last last time that when it was just considered a safety concern, the town did take care of it. Uh, moving on is the Old Town Clerk building. I did get the deeds to Tim Sargent, who's looking into it. Um, haven't heard back. Um, I did hear back on the eviction proceeding from Tim. And basically what's happening is, is that the VA, he, he, um, Mr. Ledoux reached out to the VA um, uh, to discuss his former property. It says that the organization is willing to assist Mr. Ledoux to pay back the town for the expenditures, return to tax sale. He told the organization he would reach out to us to discuss. There's a chance he could start missing his taxes again if the property is deeded back to him. It does seem risky. There are also health concerns with the property because I understand there might be no well or septic. The veterans organization will be responding to my complaint if we proceed, which essentially means if they contest, they will contest the ejectment action. The veterans group also mentioned they were also looking for an apartment for Mr. Ledoux, but hasn't found one. Uh, so I emailed the listers. We don't have well or septic on that property. Um, and when we reassess the town, uh, Al and I actually got all the way there. I've been at that house. And there, if there was well or septic, we would have put it on at that time. Um, so Tim wants to know specifically if they're going to, if, if, if the town would like to work with Ed to deed back the property or carry on with the ejectment action. And what I sort of am thinking is that um, once Tim, what I suggested to Tim is that I think you should mention to the VA that there's no well or septic on right, this property because, it's just a because chances are the VA at that point is not going to really want to place them there. Right. And then that would just go ahead and answer the question for everyone without the select board having to make any big decisions. So uh, uh, it, there's not only no well or septic on the property. In a Nobody should be so you can't, that. you won't be able to drill, you, can, you know. Be able well. to do anything right. You should have been living on that land for the last 20 years. Yep. So, so that being said, my real estate experience tells me that the VA is not going to do anything no, to get this guy onto this land. Uh, so therefore, I think if we kind of sit on our hands, you, you know, it's middle of winter, it's still getting plowed, someone's let it, there. Let, let the legal process proceed, yeah. I think that'd be in the best interest. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Nope, sounds cool. good to me. All right, yeah, so that is slowly moving forward. How can you tell if there is a septic system there now? Well, he said not he just checked with the listers and there isn't. Maybe not now, but the fact that there's a, a right. wetland would really right. prohibit right. your ability to check with you guys and there isn't. No, no, we don't think there's any uh, facility at all on site because I went there. I don't think there is myself, but I'm just bringing these points up. Right. Well, if so you the checked with the time, listers and the listers said there isn't, so if and I was actually on the property. Then there I was, isn't. Yeah, and I went on that property inspection years ago when we reassessed town, and and Ed actually, yeah, he came out. He, yeah. It's actually quite the experience. It's a good story if anyone ever wants to hear it. But um, we ended up all the way down there with the dogs and everything in the shed, and he fully disclosed what he what he did and didn't have. It was quite interesting. So at that time, Al and I reported that he had no well or septic, and chances are he hasn't put in that infrastructure since then. <coughs> what was that? There was, yeah, there was a house which Al took a picture of and almost got us in trouble. And yeah, it was really funny. So was, you're gonna have Tim contact the VA and let them know that there's no- I have already emailed Tim and okay. he's hopefully contacting the VA in order to have them be the gentle letdown because there's just- And it is in the wetlands. Oh yeah, yeah. 
but I drove by there the other day and it's still getting plowed and maintained and there's activity down there. So I was still there. I just yesterday walked in charge of the village. Yep. Which they're cell phone servicing now. Um, town hall requests. No. Cindy Lacoste. Grandchild's birthday party on March 21st, 2020, from 4 to 7. No alcohol. Signed by Cindy Lacoste. I'll make a motion to approve. Motion, motion made by Kimberly, second by Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Deb, if there could be an action item for. Um, Whoever has access to this, if not, you can email it to me. Just update the dates now that we're on 2020. The uh, 2019. Great. That one. Uh, Danielle Allen is requesting a baby shower on March 22nd. Okay. No conflict. 11 a.m. to 4. Without alcohol. Motion to approve. Second. Made by Kimberly, second by Michael. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Money. Where does that go? Well, into the town. Yeah. Town hall. Payroll and orders is being circulated. Yeah, and just so you guys all know, I'm now just approving them all by an email. So I print them all out at work, go through them all, take them home, whatever. <sighs> And I just, I, just, updated. I just sent her back an email, which you'll see attached to them, that oh, says that approved by email. So that's how I'm doing it now. Cause Is our account going to be okay with that process? What, the, she, yes. The, 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 yeah, and then I come in and I sign them and okay, cool. afterwards. But that way she can send the checks and doesn't have to wait. All right, perfect. Deb, if you want to switch the tape, I'll make a motion to adjourn. If you would like. Oh, should we? I think so, probably, right? I want to get I'd like to be an alternate on the DRB board. Okay. For Jim. Okay, you think his last name now? Ryan? DRB. Uh, Bill, who's it? Jim Robert. Jim Roberts. Jim Roberts. Roberts. Jim Jim Roberts. Roberts. There you go. All right. He asked me, and I think for. You need three more. Yes. Okay. So we have I, to. I want to be an alternate. So we have to motion that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, we make the motion. Yeah, that's easy. Unless the representative, the sole representative Although you can of the be a, DRB you can be an alternate so. for anybody, not just him. Because it's a planning yeah, commission, too. For the board. But it's yes. a planning commission as well as a DRB. Right. I think it's one board now. The two would be common. Right. So right. you'd be an alternate effectively for both. Yep. Yes. For you, sir. Uh -huh. Five people? So Almost as much as the public. We have to do that. Very oh, oh. Is that a you? Uh, are you on that board? What? No, no. Not anymore. Oh. So we, uh, right. somebody make a motion. We're related. Okay, so what? Motion to go in executive session? No, you need no, to make a motion. First, that one. Oh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm, uh, I'm going to make a motion to go ahead and approve. Uh, or, yes, to, appoint. Appro to appoint. There you go. That's the one. As alternate. Lucian, as an alternate to the DRB slash planning commission. I'll second. By Jennifer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Not me. Take me off. Lucian's just trying to keep up with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be on midboard. The, the great race, boys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if that's that, then I guess I'd like to make a, a motion to go in executive session. Or, uh, yep. Right. For personnel. Right. Uh, second. By Michael. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.